70% of Americans say the U.S. healthcare system is in a state of crisis or that it has major problems. That's why we're hearing a lot about Medicare for All, including some plans going as far as banning private health insurance companies altogether. On page eight of the bill, it says that we will no longer have private insurance as we know it. And that means that 149 million Americans will no longer be able to have their current insurance. That's in four years. I don't think that's a bold idea. I think it's a bad idea. Problem, Senator Sanders, with that damn bill that you wrote that. and that <laughs> Senator Warren backs is that it doesn't trust the American people. I trust you to choose what makes the most sense for you. Not my way or the highway. One country found a way to provide universal health care coverage while maintaining a competitive insurance market that offers citizens more choices. Germany. Here's how they did it. In 2017, U.S. healthcare spending came to around 10,200 U.S. dollars per capita. In Germany, it was a little under $6,000. Overall, Germany spent about 11.2% of its GDP on healthcare, while the U.S. spent 17.1%. Germany manages to cover 100% of its population. In the United States, about 8.8% of the population remains uninsured. That comes to about 28 million people, with even more people underinsured. Despite spending less, Germany has better or comparable health outcomes to the United States. Studies show that in Germany, there were fewer deaths that could have been prevented with proper access to care. In 2013, there were 83 avoidable deaths out of every 100,000 people in Germany, while the United States had 112. Life expectancy in Germany is 2.5 years higher than the United States, and the infant mortality rate is lower in Germany, with 3.3 deaths per 1,000 live births, as opposed to 5.8 deaths in the United States. Additionally, the maternal mortality rate in the United States is more than two times higher than in Germany. So how does Germany manage to have better health outcomes while spending nearly half as much as the United States. Germany is a system that would look familiar to Americans in that everybody buys health insurance from a private company. And then the doctors and the hospitals and the labs are almost all private. That's T.R. Reed, author of the book, The Healing of America. He traveled the world exploring different healthcare systems and how well they worked. But it works better in Germany uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, Everybody is covered. Everybody is required to have insurance. Everybody's in the system. The insurance companies can't turn you down because you had a cancer last year or something. They have to take you. They have to cover you. Everybody has access to the same treatment and this, all the doctors, you can go to any doctor without, without any limit set by the insurance company. In Germany, health insurance is mandatory for all citizens and permanent residents. There are two different systems that residents can turn to for insurance, SHI, which stands for statutory health insurance, and PHI, or private health insurance. German citizens are eligible for PHI if they make more than roughly 60,000 US dollars per year, or if they are self-employed. Citizens making under that threshold must pay into SHI. SHI is made up of a network of competing not-for-profit private health insurance funds, known as sickness funds. In SHI, dependents are covered free of charge and monthly costs are capped around 840 euro per month. Even though SHI sickness funds are not government agencies, many Germans think of them as part of a public system because of heavy regulation. Keith Tanner helps expats navigate the German healthcare system, and he considers SHI sickness funds quasi-public organizations. Basically, they have to do what they're told. They, they are told by the government what, in what range they can charge. They, they're told what health procedures they can fund. And they are told by the government who they can accept as clients. So they're really just carrying out orders. They're basically charities. They don't exist to make a profit for investors like American health insurance companies. They're there to keep people healthy. That's what they're there for. They follow all sorts of rules that American insurance companies 
wouldn't dream of. The system is funded through compulsory contributions based on a percentage of citizens' salaries, with employers sharing the costs. There are also built-in safety nets. The government will pay into SHI on behalf of the long-term unemployed. Despite being non-profit organizations, sickness funds compete for customers by offering specific coverage and perks. This competition has changed over the years as the system has allowed citizens more choice. As of 2019, there are about 100 statutory health insurance companies, but there used to be many more. When Germany's system was first established in the late 1800s, sickness funds were linked to a person's profession. It used to be that people were assigned to a specific sickness fund based on their occupation or region. Now Germans can choose where they enroll, and they can change funds on a yearly basis. As a result, sickness funds began marketing themselves in order to retain customers and attract new ones. This also led to the funds merging so they could become more competitive. Some of the sickness funds offer perks that might seem similar to credit card rewards. You still can get a bonus for going to the gym, and a bonus for having a checkup. This is in the public system. And if you get a certain number of bonus points, then you get a voucher. But kind of trivial stuff, like 200 a year or something like that. Um, 200 euros a year, nothing um, which is particularly relevant to the person who's paying the, their 840 a month. As of 2017, roughly 87% of Germans received their primary coverage through SHI and 11% of the population through PHI. The remaining population, such as soldiers, police officers, and refugees, receive health insurance through specific government programs. All individuals insured through PHI pay a risk-related premium with separate premiums for each dependent. These risk-based premiums mean that costs will increase as the insured gets older. As a result, the government regulates PHI so people don't become overburdened by premiums as they age. The biggest issue with private health insurance if you opt out of, the, of a public system is affordability in old age. If you don't impose these financial constraints on the insurers, then the government will be lumbered with a whole lot of old people who reach 85, 90, 95 and are going to be totally unable to pay for their health insurance. So it'll all fall back on the government. Once someone switches to PHI, they cannot switch back to SHI in the future. But Tanner says there are ways around that. If you're a freelancer in the private system, you're just going to get a job. Paying less, there's a threshold. Any employee earning under about 5000 a month is required to have public. If they earn more than that, they can opt out. So if you are a freelancer, you want to go back into the public system for some reason, then you get a part-time job with a friend, pays you 500 a month for a few, few months, and then you're back in the public system. So there are ways to do it. The only reason you probably want to do that, though, is if you have lots of children, because children can be covered free in the public system, and the private system have to pay separately for each child. Germans can also buy supplemental private insurance while staying in SHI. For example, many Germans buy supplemental dental insurance. The public system pays like for major dental work about half the cost and then you get the supplementary to take it up to 80, 90% of the cost. Germany's system is not perfect. With so many different insurance companies, there's a lot of bureaucracy that contributes to costs. Uh, one of the financial things, thinking of the public system administered by more than 100 organizations called Krankenkasse. Each of those has a head office and, and a president and a vice president and a financial officer and a whole lot of unnecessary bureaucracy. This may be one of the reasons that the German system is not as cost-effective as other European countries. More than 30% of both Germans and Americans felt bureaucracy was a major issue in their country's system. Wait times can also be an issue for people in SHI. 37% of Germans cite wait times as one of the biggest problems within their system, while 22% of Americans feel the same. Generally, I think people are quite happy with the public system. It works reasonably well. The major issue in big cities, I'm in Berlin, Munich, Dusseldorf, Hamburg, it can take quite a while to get an appointment with a specialist. It is the case that the doctors prefer the private patients because they earn up to three times more if they see a private patient. So what can the United States learn from the German system? Germany has managed to balance cost controls and universal coverage while also maintaining competition. And Germans generally like their system. 
In one survey, not a single German said they had to wait more than four months for an elective surgery, while 4% of Americans said that they had to wait that long for the same kinds of procedures. And only 7% of Germans said they experienced a barrier to care because of cost in the past year, compared to 33% of Americans. The citizens really like it. They like the fact that everybody is covered. They like the fact that uh, the costs are totally predictable. You know what it's going to cost you and how much your insurance company is going to pay you before you walk in, unlike the United States. Uh, they think it's normal that the insurance company pays every claim. They, they can't believe that an insurance company might deny a claim. And they think it's normal that they get to choose the doctor. They don't understand America where the insurance company says, we won't cover Dr. Jones, you have to go to Dr. Smith instead. So the main thing I learned in going around the world is you have to make the commitment to provide health care for everybody. That's the destination. It turns out there are many different routes to that destination. I found, you know, the Canadian model, the French model, the British model, the German model, they all get, get to this goal in different ways and different models. So I, I don't care what the model is. I think it's important that you make the commitment to cover everybody. And this is something the world's richest country has never done.